Hello, my name is April and welcome to the Yoga Ranger Studio. Today's practice is all about the neck, shoulders, and upper back. And this is a beginner class only in terms of we're holding these poses just a little bit shorter amount of time for those of you who are newer to yin yoga or who would like to maybe experience a little less time in some of the poses that might be a little bit more challenging. So generally in yin yoga, we hold our poses somewhere between one and eight minutes. This practice will be about two to three minutes per pose. And we'll kind of just breathe it out and experience it. We're also gonna use a few more props. So no matter what level your practice is or what you comfort level you have with your practice, you should always have a few props around you just in case it might feel better to have that prop or use it today since your practice changes every single day and your body is different every single day have a few props around for some support to feel a little bit better so just some three basic tenets that we follow in our yin yoga practice the first is to find your appropriate edge and i emphasize the word your because everybody's body is different your pose may not look like mine or i may not look like you and that's okay this is your practice so if you need to find back off a little bit or you have a little bit more range of motion feel free to take the range of motion that works best for you right now today our second tenet is to after finding that appropriate edge to become as still as possible and this doesn't mean you can't ever move it doesn't mean that you are stuck in that position forever if you find that that pose causes you pain and you cannot breathe or it's exceedingly uncomfortable where you can't sustain the pose, then you should want to kind of back off a little bit or come out of the pose altogether. Or if you find that after a breath or two, you have a little bit more opening, you can go a little bit deeper into the pose. And that will depend once again, entirely on how your body is doing today. Our third tenet is to remain there for time. And this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult. Yin is a challenging practice in that you are holding these poses longer. And what I ask you to do is just breathe into the pose, have a little patience and know that every single pose, no matter how challenging or difficult it may seem, will end. It will come to an end and it will feel good afterwards. So a couple of props to have around you. I always have a blanket underneath, but this is purely optional. I just like the fact that my bones are a little protected from the floor. Um, a second blanket, if you don't have a blanket, a beach towel or large towel will work just as well. And a block, I'm sitting on my block right here. So if you have a block or two, you might wanna grab those. If you don't, make use of some pillows off the couch or something else. Come into whatever seated posture you like best. So for me, this is the most comfortable position, but for you, it may be a cross-legged position or the bottoms of the feet together. Use that block and blanket to give you a little bit of height and get some length through the spine for our practice. So we're gonna start with our neck with some just basic stretches to help lengthen the side of the neck and we're gonna hold them for a little bit longer. So go ahead and drop that right ear over to that right shoulder. You're gonna take your right hand and place it on the edge of the left shoulder. Take that left hand down to the floor. Now this may not seem like much, but we're gonna hold it for about a minute. It's a nice stretch for this shoulder neck connection. Settle into your breath. One of the best ways to release tension in your body is through the breath. So I generally suggest that in yin, you take a sort of lengthening the exhale breath. Imagine you're just sighing everything out, letting it go, making space. Just two more deep breaths. Go ahead and release that right hand down. Roll the chin to the chest. And just allow the chin to drop toward the chest, the shoulders away. Take your hands behind you, interlace the fingers and just allow them to weigh the back down. releasing your hands coming back to center you're going to bring that left arrow to that left shoulder 
Let that right shoulder drop. Take that left hand to the tip of the left shoulder and just gently give it a little weight. You're not actually pressing down, you're just giving it a little weight here. This is a good time to check in with your body and see which side is feeling a certain way. So every day I wake up and one side feels different than the other, and that's okay. Some days I have a knot on one side. Some days I don't. Remember to extend your exhale. A lot of moving through a yin pose has to do with the breath. Using that breath to release the muscles, release the tension, and settle you into the pose. Just two more deep breaths. Release that hand down. Come back, drop the chin to the chest. This time you're gonna take your hands, you're gonna interlace the fingers and take the thumbs to the base of your skull. Elbows come forward and you're just gonna let the elbows weigh the head down and get a little bit more stretch. And see if you feel this all the way down your back. I often can feel it all the way into my lower back. You're not pressing, just allowing the weight of gravity to pull those elbows. Release that hold, come back to center. So you're gonna turn your head over to the right. Take your pointer finger and just touch the chin and just pull it a little bit further. So you're not pushing real hard, you're just nudging it a little bit further. Keep the chin level with the floor. Come back to center, we're gonna switch sides. Turn to the other side and notice if one side has more opening than the other. For those of you who sleep on your stomach or on your side, you'll notice that one side has more opening than the other. Just something to notice and think about. Release and come back to center. We're gonna take a twisted child's pose next. So we might wanna have our block and blanket nearby. I sometimes like to have my head on a blanket or a block, so it depends on where you're at in your child's pose. So take your big toes together, knees either super wide apart or closer. It depends entirely on how you're doing today. You're gonna to walk yourself a little bit over to the right. Take that left hand out. You can rest your head on a block or on the blanket or both stacked on top of each other. Here you're just gonna gently place your right hand on top of your left palm. And that's just gonna kind of hold it in place. Breathe into the shoulder and the upper back. If after a while you feel like you wanna go a little bit more or pull back a little bit, adjust after the first few breaths. Just one more minute here. Focus on that breath. And here we use a three-part breath as well. So breathing into the belly, the chest, the collarbones, and allowing that exhale to extend a little bit longer. Last two deep breaths. Mm -hmm. 
Bring your right hand down in front of your face. Slowly press up and pull that left hand back out. And here you're just gonna take the hands out in front of you for an extended child's pose. Forehead to your blanket or block. Now if this pose hurts your knees, you can always rock forward a little bit more and take some of the compression off the back of the knees or take a blanket behind the knees. Give you a little bit of propage. Lift your head up. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So walk yourself just a little bit over to the left. Tuck that right arm underneath. Cross it underneath you. You can rest the side of your face or head on the blanket or a bolster or a block, whatever you want to. Take your left hand and just place it on the right palm and that's just gonna hold it in place so that you get a little bit more traction. So keeping in mind that yin is focused on connective tissue, joints, fascia, this colder tissue that responds well to sort of a longer hold traction type effect. Check back in with your breath. Feeling the belly, chest, collarbones, exhaling it all out nice and long and slow. Just a few more breaths here. Bring that left palm in front of the face, very slowly press into that palm, lift yourself up and pull that arm back out. And this time you can either leave that blanket or block in front of you. We're gonna take a little version of this that's different. So walk your hands out. You're gonna bring your palms together. You can either stay here or you can go ahead and bring the thumbs to the back of the neck or somewhere in between so they can be right above your head. Walk your elbows out a little bit further. This is gonna give you a nice stretch the upper back and shoulders, the front of the chest, the underside of the arms. Drop those hands down and come all the way up. Lean forward, bring those knees a little bit closer together and do about three cat cows here. Rolling the shoulders back and then arching around them toward the ears. Get a little movement in the spine. Some people between poses prefer to be very still and if that's you, you can always take the child's pose a little bit longer. Some people prefer to move a little bit more actively like we're doing here. Coming back to center. So if you have tender knees, this would be a great time to take that blanket underneath your knees for what we call quarter dog pose. 
So you're gonna keep your hips right above the knees. So you're gonna kinda of stay in your tabletop position. Walk your hands out, and here's where a block might come in handy. Okay. You're gonna take that right arm, cross it in front, walk the left arm out to the side, and then just drop your head onto the block or your forearm. So walk your left arm out to the side, so it's more like a Y or a V format. If you don't need the block, you can take your head to your forearm. We're only gonna be here for about a couple of minutes. Remember, every pose comes to an end. Here again, check in with the breath. See if you're holding your breath or you're not filling your belly, chest, and collarbones up. If your breath has become shallow. Begin to lengthen the exhale out. And allow everything to soften toward the floor. Let gravity do its work here. A little less than a minute to go. I know that some poses can seem like we hold them forever. And two minutes can seem like ten. But following your breath allows you to release that focus on the time. Start to lift your head from wherever it's at. Walk that left hand back in. Come back to center. Here again, do a few cat cows just to reset. Knowing how each side is different, know that you may need to use the block this time, or maybe you could take your head down onto your arm. Switching sides, walk your hands out, keep your hips in line. Take that left arm across. Walk that right arm out a little bit more toward the side. Instead of straight out in front of you, we're going out sideways to get a slightly different stretch. Notice the difference between this side and the other side. Maybe you feel more tension or more opening on this side. Just one more minute here. Extending your exhale. Maybe even just breathing out through your mouth to release. From here, go ahead and lift your head, walk that hand back in. Start to lift up, cat cow here again, just three times.
coming back to center, you can take that block off to the side, and we're gonna take a supported fish pose. So take your blanket or beach towel and make it a little bit longer, and you're gonna roll it the long way. So we get a little support underneath our shoulders. Come on to your back, lie down. You can have your shoulder blades right on top of it and start to just sort of shift off so your shoulder blades barely touch the floor. Now here you can take your feet flat, knees together, arms out to the side. If you have a little bit more comfort here, you can start to walk those legs out straight. And if you feel okay, if you want to, you can bend your elbows. So as long as your arms are fully supported on the floor, you can keep this position wherever you want. If your arms start to drift up and you have some lift on the elbows or the arms, come back down a little bit so you feel that support of the floor. Settle into the pose. Check in with the breath. Extend your exhale a little bit longer and longer than your inhale. Close your eyes. Because your chest is lifted in this pose, you can really take some deep, full, rich breaths. Take this time to exhale and soften the shoulders, allowing each exhale to release some of the tension. And even though at the beginning you often really feel this roll in the back, you will find that with a little bit of time and breath, you don't notice it quite as much. Gently begin to bend your knees, bring the feet flat. You're gonna walk those feet in a little bit closer. Press through the heels, lift your hips, and you're gonna take that blanket off to the side. It may take a little wiggling to get it out of there. Come down onto your back, hands alongside your hips. Just let your back settle back into the natural curve. And kind of sense how this feels in the upper back and shoulders. Next pose is banana pose. So walk your feet out straight. I'm going to offer you some different variations on this. So you're going to walk your feet over to the right. And here you have some choices. For grounding, you can cross that right ankle over the left. And that's going to keep that left leg in stable and in place. Take your arms up overhead. Reach up. Now, if you want to just keep your hands where they were previously over up over the head, you can, or you can grab hold of elbow, arm, wrist, and just get a little pull with that right hand pulling the left. If you feel good here, you can stay here. If you want a little bit more, you can cross the outside leg, the left leg over the right, and that's going to give you more stretch down the side body. If you want even more, you can start to move your upper body over to the right as well, and you get this big long stretch from the left fingertips all the way down the arc of the ankle. But sometimes it feels good just to ground that leg a little bit and keep it in place with that right ankle. You can turn your head to the left or to the right or keep it looking straight up. Breathing into that left side body. Breathing into that whole rainbow shaped curve. Maybe after a few breaths you find you want to deepen your pose or maybe you would like to come out a little bit and always feel free to adjust that where you need it to be.
Just one more minute here. Last deep breath. Begin to release that arm if you have a hold on it and take those hands alongside the hips. Move the upper body back into place if you shifted that. Unwind the ankles and take the heels wide, palms facing up. Take a few breaths here just to notice the left and right sides and the differences between the two. I always tend to feel a little bit taller on the first side before I move to the second side. You think about how we live our lives. It is rare that we stretch this side body, this entire length of the side body in our everyday living. Unless you intentionally stretch that, it doesn't get a lot of movement. And this is where a lot of our breath happens here is on the side body, the expansion. So we wanna open that space up for me, it's the tightness lends to tighter shoulders and lack of movement in my shoulders. So here we're going to go ahead and move our feet over to the left side or whichever side you didn't do first. Cross that left ankle over the right. Start to move your upper body. If that felt good for you the first time, you can try it here and see how that feels. Arms up overhead. Grab what feels good here. It may be this side. Maybe you just barely grab the fingers or maybe you have more and you grab the elbow or the forearm. Keep both hips on the floor. Remembering to breathe into that entire side body from the right heel all the way up through the right fingertips. And sometimes when we're doing yin poses, you may feel like a little bit of itching. Sometimes the skin is stretching. Sometimes the connective tissue right underneath the skin is getting a little mobilization here. Just about one more minute here. Last deep breath. Fill that entire side body up. Exhale it out. Release whatever you have in your hands. Take them alongside your hips. Move your body back to center. Uncross your ankles if they were crossed. And just relax. Take a few breaths here, noticing the change in left and right. We call these spaces in between the poses rebound. There's a rebound effect. And sometimes these spaces in between the poses 
are as important or even more important than the pose themselves. Bending your knees, bring your feet flat. The last pose before Shavasana is going to be a twist. So take your arms out to the side, palms facing up. You're gonna lift your hips and shift them over to the right. This is gonna keep your spine in alignment. Bring the knees into the chest a little bit and drop them over to the left. Now, if your knees have a space in between them, you can always take a blanket and tuck it in between there. Tucking your heels back further will change where this is. So if you have some struggles here, you can either take the feet out further or tuck them back behind you. You can look straight up or turn over your shoulder. Lucy's coming to visit us today. Hi, Lucy. Just about 30 more seconds here. to come back up to center take that blanket off to the side shift your hips straight down the middle take a couple of breaths here in the center and then lift your hips over to the opposite side bring your knees into your chest Drop those knees over to the right. Here again, if you wanted to use the blanket, you could, or you don't have to. You can turn and look over your left shoulder, or you can look straight up. Just one more minute here. If you have a cat prop who can help hold down your legs and convince them to do that, you can use that too. Gently start to turn your head back to center. Bring the knees back through the middle. Shift your hips down the center. Walk your feet wide, drop the knees together. Here you can just take your hands to your belly or your heart for Shavasana. Tucking the shoulder blades underneath. Breathing into the space, upper back, neck, chest and shoulders.
taking time to really breathe and relax the entire body. Filling your lungs all the way up from the belly to the chest to the collarbones. And exhaling it all out through your mouth. So one more time like that, inhaling, filling all the way up to the top. Opening your mouth, exhaling out. If you have more time to spend in Shavasana, I always recommend spending as much time as you possibly can to integrate all of your practice into your body. If this is all the time you have, you can begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, roll over to your side, and gently press yourself up. Here you can make use of that block again for a seat, keeping your eyes closed or open, palms facing up or down on your knees. On your next exhale, drop the fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, sweep the hands all the way up. Open your eyes, look up at your palms. Exhale, hands to heart. Peace and namaste. I hope this practice helped you open this entire upper body area, feel a little bit more opening, deeper breath, less tension. If you liked this practice, please like and comment down below. And if you are not a subscriber, join me for a new upload every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. New videos every week. And if you're interested in diving deeper into your practice, please join me on the member site at theyogaranger.vhxtv. There'll be a link down below and up above to join me for exclusive member practices, live calls, um, journaling, some extras on there as well and also some visits with Lucy, if you like Lucy. So whatever that may be, join me either here or on theyogaranger.vhx.tv and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.